I'm Dr. Bight, a neurologist with the Norton Neuroscience Institute Sung Multiple Sclerosis Center. Today, we are going to talk about pregnancy and multiple sclerosis. My disclosures are that I've served on advisory boards for EMD Serono and Genentech, and that I have received financial compensation as a member of the Speakers Bureau for EMD Serono. Before we continue, I would like to make a quick disclaimer. In this talk, we will be talking about the off-label use of some multiple sclerosis drugs. Some of the information I will be sharing with you is based on expert opinion or my personal opinion. It is very important to discuss plans to become pregnant, what medications you are taking if you are pregnant, and the use of medications during breastfeeding with your healthcare provider. So like I said, today we are going to talk about multiple sclerosis in pregnancy. Specifically, what do we know about the risk for having relapses when pregnant? What do we know about MS and breastfeeding? And what about the use of disease-modifying therapies or the medications we use to treat MS for women planning to become pregnant, during pregnancy, and during breastfeeding? So what do we know about MS in pregnancy? Before the late 1990s, many women with MS were told not to get pregnant because physicians were worried that it wasn't safe for people with MS. There was not very much data looking at how women with MS fared during pregnancy. Then, in 1998, there was a study called PRIMS published. This was a study looking specifically at the risk for relapses in women before, during, and after their pregnancies. This pivotal study showed that the relapse rate fell or was lower during pregnancy, especially in the second and third trimesters. This graph shows the annual relapse rate or number of relapses per year that women were having in the year prior to pregnancy, during the three trimesters, and after pregnancy. You can see that there's an increased risk for relapse after giving birth. So this study showed, in other words, that pregnancy was actually protective for people with multiple sclerosis. Other important findings in this study suggested that epidural anesthesia is safe for women with MS, which is great news, it's safe to get an epidural. Breastfeeding was safe for women with MS and didn't seem to make the MS worse. And most importantly, the PRIM study showed that there was no accelerated accumulation of disability at one year for women who got pregnant overall. In other words, women who got pregnant did not look worse later on compared to other people with MS. Several other studies followed the PRIMS trial and these showed similar results or were supportive. So if you remember the graph from the PRIMS trial that showed an increased risk for relapses after giving birth, based on this data and the data from supporting studies, we know what factors increase a woman's risk for having a relapse after giving birth. This includes the relapse rate in the year before getting pregnant or how active your disease is in the year before getting pregnant, having a relapse during pregnancy, and having a higher disability score at baseline, meaning having more difficulty walking, using your hands or manual dexterity, and higher levels of cognitive dysfunction or problems with memory or thinking. This is why many MS providers recommend that women go on a medication and are stable with no relapses for at least one year before they try to get pregnant. What about multiple sclerosis and breastfeeding? The PRIMS data suggested that breastfeeding is safe for women with MS. Later studies demonstrated that breastfeeding is actually protective and that women who exclusively breastfed their babies had a lower relapse rate and were less likely to have relapses in the postpartum period. This graph is from a study done comparing women who exclusively breastfed versus women who did non-exclusive breastfeeding or who breastfed but also supplemented with formula. This data shows that women who exclusively breastfed had a longer time to the first relapse after giving birth. or They had a decreased risk for having a relapse in the first six months after giving birth. We think that exclusive breastfeeding may decrease the risk for postpartum relapse by about 40%. What about disease-modifying therapies or the medications used to treat multiple sclerosis in pregnancy? This part of the talk includes some off-label information regarding MS drugs. Much of what follows is based on expert opinion or just my opinion. In terms of injectable therapies, glutiramer acetate or copaxone and the interferons or drugs like beta serenone and rebif have been studied in over 2,500 pregnancies. Based on this data, it is the opinion of some MS providers that these drugs can be continued when a woman is trying to become pregnant and either stopped when she has a positive pregnancy test 
or continue during pregnancy in some circumstances. We recommend that the oral drugs should be stopped during pregnancy. The amount of time that you need to be off these drugs depends on the drug. We call this the washout period. Drugs like Tecfidera or dimethyl fumarate and Vumerity or diroximal fumarate have a very short washout period. Drugs like Abagio or teraflunamide and Mavenclad or Cladribine have a much longer washout period. Some drugs like Gelenia and Mazent or other drugs in that class have a risk for rebound disease activity when they are stopped. This means that patients may have bad relapses when the drugs are stopped and they should talk to their MS providers before stopping the drugs to try to find ways to reduce the risk for rebound. In terms of infusion drugs, Tysabri can either be stopped prior to becoming pregnant and women may be switched to another drug, or Tysabri can be continued in some cases during the first and second trimesters. Babies exposed to Tysabri in the third trimester are at risk for low blood counts at birth, especially anemia and low platelet counts. We know that stopping Tysabri when a woman has a positive pregnancy test is also a bad idea because women are at risk for severe relapses or rebound during their pregnancies. Women on Tysabri who want to become pregnant should discuss options with their MS provider and decide if they are going to continue the drug during the first part of pregnancy or stop the drug before coming pregnant. For the drugs that work by depleting or killing adult B cells like ocrelizumab or ocrevus and rituximab or rituxin, which is sometimes used off-label for multiple sclerosis and key symptom, these drugs are unlikely to cross the placenta during the first trimester. This means that the risk of the baby being exposed to the drug if given just prior to becoming pregnant is low. Many MS providers recommend giving the last dose of rituxin or ocrevus six to nine weeks before becoming pregnant. Kesimpta, which is an injectable drug, can be given closer to when a woman conceives. The nice thing about these drugs is that there is a longer lasting protection against relapses and no risk for rebound or severe relapses when the drugs are stopped. Drugs like Ocrevus or Rituxin can give protection for six to nine months after the last dose. With Kesimpta, there is protection from relapses for three to five months after the last dose on average. Finally, some MS specialists use these drugs as a bridge to protect women from rebound when they're stopping Tysabri or drugs like Gelenia. In terms of using disease-modifying therapies in breastfeeding, many women opt to stay off disease-modifying therapy. We know that exclusive breastfeeding is protective. Some drugs have limited data suggesting they may be used in certain circumstances during breastfeeding. These drugs include the older injectable drugs like Copaxone and the interferons, which have been the most well studied. Other drugs are sometimes used during breastfeeding, like rituxin and ocrevus. Some MS providers are using Kesimpta during breastfeeding in some cases. Tysabri can also be used, but we know that a higher amount of Tysabri is present in breast milk compared to rituxin and ocrevus, so it should be used with caution. Women who opt not to or are unable to breastfeed should ideally restart their MS medication two to four weeks after giving birth. In conclusion, pregnancy is thought to be protective in multiple sclerosis, and there's a decrease in the relapse rate, especially in the second and third trimesters. There's an increased risk for relapse after giving birth. Exclusive breastfeeding for at least two months protects against relapses. Finally, it is always important to discuss plans to become pregnant and DMT use if you are planning to become pregnant, are pregnant, or are breastfeeding with your MS provider. If you would like to research further, here are the sources I used to prepare this presentation. To learn more about the Norton Neuroscience Institute Hassung Multiple Sclerosis Center or to make an appointment, go to nortonneurosscienceinstitute.com. Thank you so much for listening. Mm -hmm.